When the parcel is received, its contents will be identified and registered before being carefully filed. In the meantime, the butterfly breeders who have the opportunity to come to the office display their catches on small boards. Children also do this. An employee records everything. Live butterflies at the nymph stage also are brought and are waiting to hatch while a technician sorts other insects. Here's a nymph of the blue butterfly, Ulysses. Meanwhile, the accounts have been made and everybody has been paid. The administrative aide, Mrs. AZ, tells us about the agency. The agency was created in 1978 and is part of the University of Technology in Papua, New Guinea. It's responsible for assembling and marketing the insects and for providing a guarantee of their quality and the scientific development. It's a semi-official non-profit association employing 10 women and 7 men and thanks to it, over 600 villages in 19 provinces receive an income. In the laboratory, they're preparing a butterfly for perfect drying in order to place it later in a decorative frame, like these two well-labeled females. Other arrangements of different species can be located. By means of the label stuck on the back, the agency can be identified. Eighteen different butterflies, all identified, were gathered for this birthday present. And finally, it's packaged and everything is ready for shipping. We are now visiting another village in the forest, lying in a clearing where there are plenty of plants and wild flowers. The building piles are typical of its construction. As elsewhere, the inhabitants obtain eggs, caterpillars or pupae in the surrounding areas from time to time. The son of the head of the family explains. Tourists come to our area with to provide them the accommodation. In Madagascar, they also breed butterflies to sell, as Mr. Holiana, the person in charge of the farm, tells us. The center, uh, sur tout, sur, uh, the center is concerned particularly with butterflies in order to obtain between 1,000 and 2,000 pupae a month. This farm lies in a forest valley and has large aviaries with insects. Some products are ready to sell. Like this yellow night butterfly, which is the biggest Madagascar night butterfly, and many pupae available for export, namely to temperate countries, where a number of butterfly gardens have been created like the one here in the Grand Duchy of Luxembourg, with big greenhouses where visitors can stroll around. Children are very attracted by the butterflies which fly around in a tropical environment, and so are adults, which proves there can be an economic outlet, however limited, for the export of butterflies from tropical countries, provided the Washington Convention is respected. The agency mentioned here buys other insects in Papua New Guinea. For instance, very colored beetles, tall spiders, or, as here, big stick insects, which are like branches on trees. 
this local species has wings. People from the neighboring villages sometimes bring live insects they've captured. All this is part of the development procedure. These two are intended for mounting. More surprisingly, this farm in Madagascar, which we've seen before, breeds huge cockroaches which are exported to France quite regularly. The head of that farm didn't want to tell us more about it. An international demand also exists for live lizards, which the farm raises. Chameleons have always fascinated us with their performances, and the demand for them is very large. This one's on the lookout for prey. Something must have moved because it's turning an eye. In a flash, the insect is caught. And this encounter too will be won by the chameleon. Which will swallow its victim whole. This last sequence is not really about mini livestock, but it is interesting as far as the official policy of the Papua New Guinea government is concerned. The government decided to organize the rational exploitation of local crocodiles, provided it would benefit the isolated villages along the rivers. Their inhabitants are being invited to catch young crocodiles while carefully respecting the rules governing their sizes. In this way, they avoid gathering wild eggs and the destruction of adults. Young crocodiles are delivered to this farm for growing and fattening. A limited number of adult crocodiles, which belong to the government, are put into the farm, which carries out all the breeding operations. We can see that some 66 eggs, laid in one nest by a female breeder living in an enclosure, are collected. Some precautions must be taken, but these men are used to it. The tub with the eggs will be carried to the incubation room. Scientific observations and tests are made in these tanks where the animals can grow faster. Shortly after their arrival, the young animals caught by the villagers get a preventive treatment, which requires the villagers to exercise a minimum of precaution, so they may not be bitten by already terrible jaws. Elsewhere in the farm, the adults are fed in their enclosures, whereas the young have their own pools. This message is for ministers, senior civil servants, deans, and heads of faculties and high schools, directors of scientific research institutions, as well as headmasters, teachers, searchers, economists and planners, without forgetting field institutions and donors. I hope you're all convinced now that mini livestock should be adopted, taught and sponsored. And for all the people who are certain to benefit from it, I thank you.